actually go outside, Ms. Thanks. What would you prefer? Yellow spandex? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 actors who look nothing like the book describes. Can you even dare to look or bear to think of me? For this list, we'll be looking at actors from TV and movies whose physical descriptions don't line up with their literary counterparts. We won't be considering instances of whitewashing, a white actor playing a non-white character, since that's its own list. Which page to screen casting choices had you hurling your book at the screen? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Hugh Jackman as Wolverine – The X-Men Franchise it's hard to imagine any other actor embodying the rage and sarcasm that is the X-Men's Wolverine. However, Jackman almost missed out on the role because of his height. In the comics, Wolverine stands at a powerful 5'3", but his big screen counterpart is a foot taller. You always liked pushing around people smaller than you. Well, I'm smaller, try pushing me! In the first film, careful camera angles were used to make Jackman appear shorter. In addition, his castmates were often put on platforms. Meanwhile, Jackman spent a lot of time crouching low with his shoes off to give the appearance that he was shorter than he is. I know what you are. You lost too money. You keep this up, you lose something else. Luckily for him, though, after the first film, nobody worried that fans would object to his towering stature. Jackman's growling charisma meant we'd have trouble picturing anyone else in the role. Why is he bothering you after all these years? Because I'm the best there is at what I do. Number 19. Arnold Schwarzenegger as Ben Richards, The Running Man This late 80s dystopian film is very loosely based on a book of the same name written by Stephen King. The movie version has Arnold Schwarzenegger's falsely accused police officer fighting for his life on a violent game show. You cold-blooded bastard. I'll tell you what I think of it. I live to see you eat that contract. But I hope you leave enough room for my fist because I'm going to ram it into your stomach! In the book, the character is a regular guy trying to escape poverty. King also described Ben Richards as scrawny and even sort of sickly. These aren't exactly words you'd use to describe Schwarzenegger at any point in his career. We all know you're a big tough guy, Ben. But that doesn't mean that you're a loner. Sometimes changing the physical details of a character doesn't really matter. However, in a story about a life or death battle, a change this big made a huge difference. Well, I haven't been in show business as long as you have, Killian. But I'm a quick learner. So I'm going to give the audience what I think they want. Number 18. Josh Brolin as Gurney Halleck. Dune. Since Dune is one of the world's best-selling science fiction novels, fans have strong opinions about who should play the characters on film. Josh Brolin's turn as Gurney Halleck in the 2021 movie doesn't quite match the book description. Smile, Gurney. I am smiling. The novel sums the character up as an ugly lump of a man. He's a combination of musician and warrior with balding blonde hair and flat features, not to mention a lumpy face. I have you. I. I'm gonna look down, my lord. You to join me in death. I see you found the mood. Although they could have altered Brolin's ruggedly handsome face for the film, we're selfishly glad they didn't. In any case, despite the differences in physical appearance, Brolin perfectly captures the fierce loyalty to House Atreides that's so important for the role. It's all right. It's all right. Number 17. Idris Elba as Roland Deschain, The Dark Tower. Who are you? It's you. This series by Stephen King is a combination of fantasy and classic western. The main character is a knight-like gunslinger in search of the fabled Dark Tower. The Dark Tower stands in the center of all things, and it stood there from the beginning of time. The books describe Roland Deschain as tall and lanky with salt and pepper hair and blue eyes. Since his cowboy-like character is often detached and unsympathetic, it's no wonder the comic illustrations bear a striking resemblance to Clint Eastwood. So it might have surprised audiences to learn that Idris Elba would be taking on the role for the film. Despite the differences in appearance, Elba clearly embodied the strength, dedication, and taciturn nature of the character. 
Or would you tell us differently? Only a god would lie to us here. Number 16. Kate and Edwina Sharma. Bridgerton. She is who I shall marry. There are a few things I must make you aware of. When the stories of the Bridgerton family moved from page to screen, one of the biggest changes was the setting. Unlike the novels, the TV series takes place in an alternate version of London that is racially integrated. We were two separate societies, divided by color, until a king fell in love with one of us. This allows for a more diverse cast that includes Simone Ashley and Charithra Chandran as Kate and Edwina Sharma. These two love interests of Anthony Bridgerton are of Indian heritage, which is a change from their pale blonde counterparts in the novels. Not only do these actresses perfectly portray these two sisters, the change also gives the opportunity for some beautiful expressions of their heritage in the show. When spread on an unmarried person, Haldi will help them find a worthy partner that makes the rest of the world quiet too. Edwina. Now, now, it is your turn to hold still. Number 15. Gerard Butler as the Phantom, the Phantom of the Opera. This classic story has been brought to life on stage and screen, and is famous for its mysteriously masked musical virtuoso. In the 2004 film, Gerard Butler's handsome face was clearly on display despite the Phantom's mask. However, in the original story by Gaston LaRue, the reclusive Eric is described as resembling something that's really closer to a corpse than a healthy human being. Fear can turn to love, you learn to see, to find the man behind the monster. He has yellowed skin stretched tight across his face, no nose, and barely any hair. Lon Chaney's portrayal in the 1925 film seems to come much closer to the original description. Since the musical film starring Butler was centered on romance and not horror, we can see why the change was made. Number 14, Anthony Perkins as Norman Bates, Psycho. Author Robert Block described Norman Bates as a middle-aged man who was short with a stout figure and not particularly good-looking. When Alfred Hitchcock brought it to the big screen, he decided to take the character in an entirely different direction. But there's no sense dwelling on our losses. We just keep on lighting the lights and following the formalities. He cast handsome heartthrob Anthony Perkins as Bates because he wanted the audience to sympathize with him more. You know, I, I think I must have one of those faces you just can't help believing. Since Janet Lee's character dies so early in the film, the audience needed someone to root for. Perkins' boy next door look fit the bill perfectly. Of course, when he shifts from a sad young man that needs comforting to a smiling lunatic, it's even more terrifying. I hope they are watching. They'll see. They'll see and they'll know and they'll say, why she wouldn't even harm a fly. Number 13, Emma Watson as Hermione Granger, the Harry Potter franchise. The film casting for the incredibly popular Harry Potter book series was pretty heavily scrutinized, with the choice of Emma Watson for Hermione definitely causing a bit of a ruckus. Book fans thought the young actress was too cute to play the clever Gryffindor. She looks beautiful. Yeah, she does. The first film did a fair attempt at the bushy brown hair that was an essential part of the bookworm's character, but the large front teeth were left right out. Funnily enough, they did try to give Watson fake teeth for the films. And what do they feel like right now? They feel fine. You don't feel like they're gonna fall out? Um, well, they still don't feel as secure as I would want them to be, but they're better than they were last time. She wore them for one scene before they abandoned the idea. Even though Hermione's overall look didn't quite match up with the novels, Watson's strong performance made us forget there was any difference at all. That's right. Now, if you two don't mind, I'm going to bed before either of you come up with another clever idea to get us killed. Or worse, expelled. Number 12. Mandy Moore as Jamie Sullivan. A Walk to Remember. Face. You look so familiar. Like this dame I knew once, only... It wasn't real, it was a dream. Tell me about this dream girl. 
It's not always necessary to have an actor dye their hair or wear a wig if it's not essential to the plot of the film. But it seems strange that blonde Mandy Moore dyed her hair brown to play Jamie Sullivan. After all, the minister's daughter in the novel by Nicholas Sparks is described as being blonde. A little maintenance, she might not look too bad, you know? <laughs> nice sweater. Thank you. Moore revealed in an interview that the hair change helped her step out of her blonde pop persona into an acting career. She felt that the darker locks helped her fully become the character and changed the way others saw her as an actress. After this film, Moore fully embraced being a brunette and didn't look back. I, you know, feel my most comfortable, most like myself yeah. when I'm a brunette. Number 11, Lily Collins as Clary Frey, The Mortal Instruments, City of Bones. Clary, wow, you look different. Yeah, it's just something I've borrowed. The description of Clary Frey in this popular teen fantasy series brings to mind the character of Merida in Brave. The fiery shadow hunter has carrot-colored hair, fair skin, green eyes, and freckles. So imagine the shock of fans when they were presented with Snow White on the big screen instead. I don't know what it is. The slump shoulders. The hair, that voice. Mm. I know what it is. I think it is the hair. I hate your hair. Lily Collins' darker hair and eyes may have annoyed fans of the book, but author Cassandra Clare had no problem with it. She explained that making Collins' hair a lighter red would have caused it to fall out. The author emphasized that the acting was the most important thing, and of course we have to agree. It's really not that big of a deal. It isn't to me either. Number 10, Taylor Momsen as Jenny Humphrey, Gossip Girl. Hi, I'm Serena. I know, I mean, hi, I'm Jenny. If you never read the Gossip Girl books and jumped right into watching the show, you're about to be in for a rude awakening. I don't expect anything anymore. Though the blonde and leggy Taylor Momsen made for great TV Jenny, she couldn't have been further than what Cecily Von Zegazer wrote in the series. We're Humphreys, Dad. Not exactly royalty uptown. Book Jenny is short, and her defining feature is her disproportionately enormous breasts. You are lucky I don't fire you this minute. Oh, you are lucky that I don't just quit. Because then what would you do? Similarly, Vanessa in the books isn't the cool boho chick played by Jessica Cesar, but more of a goth girl with a shaved head. Awkward. Number 9. Shailene Woodley as Tris Pryor, The Divergent Franchise these differences may seem kind of minor, but for fans of the book series, they made all the difference. Shailene Woodley has become known for playing the every girl, or even the plain Jane, and this does somewhat fit Triss's descriptions in the book. That's not supposed to be a choice. The Tesha tells what to do. What doesn't match is that Triss is supposed to be blonde with blue eyes, with a narrow face and a long, thin nose. Woodley may not match this description, but considering how talented of an actress she is, most people were seemingly willing to move past these differences. If I'm too good, then they'll kill me, and if I'm too slow, then I'll die. Number 8. Shay Mitchell as Emily Fields, Pretty Little Liars I think there's something wrong with me. In the Pretty Little Liars book series, Emily is described as having strawberry blonde hair and green blue eyes. And the model who portrays her on the book covers, Erin McQuatters, pretty much fits this description to a T. When it came time to cast the TV series, though, the producers decided on Shay Mitchell, who is of Irish and Filipino descent and has a much darker complexion. Ashley Benson as Hannah Marin is similarly different from her on-page self in terms of looks, with her book counterpart being described as extremely thin with long dark hair. Maybe I'm not the person everyone thinks I am. So it is. Number 7. Tom Cruise as Jack Reacher. Jack Reacher. Then there's the kind who want legal means of killing other people. There was an amount of understandable outrage when Tom Cruise was announced as being cast to play Jack Reacher in an adaptation of Lee Child's book series. Why, you might ask? Well, the book character is ex-military, and is once described by another character as, quote, one of the largest men she had ever seen outside the NFL. He's supposed to be 6'5", weigh in between 210 and 250 pounds, and boast a 50-inch chest. So notoriously short-statured actor Tom Cruise isn't exactly his physical match, to say the least. Let's get this done. <laughs> Number 6, Kira Knightley as Elizabeth Bennet, Pride and Prejudice. In one of the most famed pieces of literature in history, Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, the protagonist is notable for not necessarily being the most beautiful woman in town. 
In fact, she's considered just the second prettiest of her sisters, and is described as having asymmetrical features. But her sister Elizabeth is very agreeable. Perfectly tolerable, I dare say. She's not handsome enough to tempt me. And her Kira Knightley, one of the most striking and notably gorgeous actresses in the business. While she does an excellent job of playing Elizabeth Bennet, it's hard for anyone to believe that she could be considered anything other than a stunning beauty. You chose to tell me that you like me against your better judgment. No, believe me, I didn't If I mean... was uncivil, then that is some excuse, but I have other reasons, you know I have. Number 5. Nina Dobrev as Elena Gilbert, The Vampire Diaries And everything changes. When the producers of The Vampire Diaries TV series considered Elena, they decided to change her character from selfish Queen Bee to Girl Next Door. They believed the audience would be more likely to root for a brown-eyed brunette than a blonde bombshell. Having Nina Dobrev take on the character also meant a change to Elena's evil ancestor, Catherine Pierce. It started when Bonnie denied me my Silas-like immortality. Of course, because Catherine Pierce can't be happy with good old vampire-caliber immortality. The original German character was changed to Bulgarian to match Dobrev's own ancestry. Although author L.J. Smith was originally thrown off by the casting, she was eventually won over by Dobrev's acting skill. I need you to calm down. No, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't. Number 4. Jennifer Lawrence as Katniss Everdeen, The Hunger Games Franchise God, does anybody actually believe this? Under the circumstances. Apparently everybody. This is one example of an actress going through quite the transformation in order to fit the description that was given in the book. I volunteer! I volunteer! I volunteer as tribute! Blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jennifer Lawrence managed to do a pretty great job transforming into the dark-haired Katniss. But skin tone is, of course, not as easily matched. When the film came out, many had things to say about Lawrence's body type claiming that, in a dystopian world where food is scarce, she would never look like that. Notice how no one mentioned Gail looking too jacked, though. Fine, laugh at me. I'm not laughing at you. Number 3. Alexandra Daddario as Annabeth Chase, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief Sometimes casting directors seem to select an actor for a role despite how they look, and not because of it. For example, even though the main characters of this fantasy series are supposed to be 12 years old, the actors portraying them were in their late teens and early 20s. Even worse, Annabeth Chase is described as having long, blonde, curly hair, like a princess, tanned skin, and an athletic physique. Daughter of Athena. How do you know me? You have such beautiful hair. The actress they chose to portray her, however, Alexandra Daddario, is kind of her polar opposite when it comes to looks. Fans of the books naturally had a hard time getting used to this casting decision, but in the end, Daddario managed to win them over with her on-screen presence. My mother is goddess of wisdom and battle strategy. Do you know what that means? I always win. Number 2. Emma Stone as Skeeter Phelan – The Help it happens far too often that Hollywood decides to cast a beautiful actress in the role of a woman who is supposed to be quite ordinary looking, or even unattractive. I just couldn't tell my mind didn't get asked to the dance. The Help is yet another example of this. In the novel, Skeeter is described as being, quote, painfully tall and lanky, with frizzy red hair and a crooked nose. The character describes herself as bony and as having almost translucent eyebrows. Emma Stone, of course, is gorgeous, and while they did their best in hair and makeup, she never came close to looking like the book described. I, I, I've never met a woman that says exactly what she's thinking. Well, I got plenty to say. Yeah, I'll bet you do. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Cara Delevingne as Margot Roth Spiegelman, Paper Towns Margot was different. Margot was… special. After the success of The Fault in Our Stars, John Green fans were clamoring for another one of his novels to be adapted for the big screen. They got their wish when it was announced that Paper Towns was happening, but once casting news was announced, not everyone was pleased. The story's manic pixie dream girl, Margot Roth Spiegelman, is described as a curvy Jewish girl. Cara Delevingne is a model and obviously very slim, which kind of undermines some of the positive themes present in the novel. We are righting wrongs, and after that we're going to wrong some rights. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.